Greetings in the mighty and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Indeed, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be, we will be glad in it. It's a good day. It's a great day. I'm not sure if I'm the only one, but uh, I believe that all of you have started noticing on the outside, you know, the, the winter is slowly uh, coming uh, coming out, you know, the, the temperatures are a, are a little bit warm. You know, the season has uh, has changed. So a new season is coming uh, is coming in. A new season is being uh, is being ushered. You know, when we are faced with challenges, when we are uh, in, in in the midst of storms, it becomes or it seems as if they will never they will never pass. It seems as if they are meant to be there for uh, forever. But the seasons come and you know they they keep on reminding us to say absolutely nothing is permanent there is nothing that is permanent under the uh, under the sun except of course the weight the word of god so now when you you begin to sense you begin to feel a new season being ushered in this also says to you take courage take you know you know take heart knowing that whatever challenges whatever storms you were in they, those also shall pass the same way that in the past you used to wear or to have a number of uh, you know a lot of clothes sometimes even on the very cold cold days you find that you've taken out all of your uh, you know you are wearing your whole uh, your whole wardrobe but now suddenly you are removing most of those of those clothes because it is becoming a, a little bit a, a little bit warmer so it is in uh, in your life you know even as you know this session says joy comes in the morning this is just a reminder to say indeed joy comes in uh, comes in the morning the seasons will uh, will change you know it will not be winter uh, always warm uh, you know warmer temperatures will uh, will come and uh, even in your uh, in your life in whatever situation that you are you are faced with just know that situation will uh, will change it will not last forever it is not a permanent a permanent thing i just want to welcome you uh, to this uh, to this session to today's uh, you know joy comes in uh, comes in the morning uh, Mana Tabernacle of Witness Family, you are you are welcome. All our friends and all our uh, our viewers, you know, on Facebook, you are also you are also welcome. Thank you so much for making time this morning just to come and uh, and partake of you know uh, from the table of the Lord God Almighty. I also want to take this time and acknowledge our general overseer, Pastor Strike, and also our senior pastor, Pastor Joelin, and just continue to thank them for giving us a platform like this uh, like this one we are also we are also learning we are also in uh, you know we are also being uh, being trained in the in the process and i believe that you know all of us will grow in uh, in the lord all of us our lives will uh, will change our lives will be transformed our lives will never be uh, be the same again from you know the messages that we keep on receiving now and uh, now and again we are continuing with our with our foundations you know you realize that when we talk about uh, foundations when you are building that the the foundation is actually not the most exciting uh, part of the of the building process. You know, sometimes uh, when you take, especially when you're taking even children to uh, you know to to a building to a building site, you'll find that most of them want to start seeing the bricks being uh, being laid. They want to see you know uh, their bedrooms to say this is my bedroom. They they you know that's what they want to they want to see. They want to see the windows in. They want to see the roof being in. But they do not know and they do not understand that the foundation is the most important. And sometimes the foundation actually takes much longer depending on the size of the structure that you are building. If you are building a massive, a high-rise structure, the people will keep on digging, 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 going even deeper under uh, underground. But once, you know, uh, that is done, the building process going up is much smoother, it's much easier because a proper foundation has been has been laid and even those builders they are confident that the structure that they have built is going to uh, to stand the test the test of time we must also be able to stand the test of time as children of uh, as, uh, as children of god you know we whatever challenges whatever trouble comes our way we should be able to keep on standing and look them straight in the in the face and like job be able to say i know my redeemer is alive and at last he shall be able to stand you know on the uh, on the earth because you are sure-footed you are properly grounded you are founded on the right uh, foundation we are continuing with i think our now familiar uh, scripture first corinthians chapter uh, chapter 3 and uh, for today i'll just read verse uh, verse 11 
it says, For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Brethren, you know, I was thinking yesterday uh, to say that, uh, you know, deception. No one will ever deceive you about uh, something that does not look like the genuine uh, than the genuine thing. Every time you hear deception, then that person will bring something that looks like what you know, that looks like the original thing, but it is not the original, uh, the original thing. You know, even with even with money, talk about fake money. You know, whenever they come, they will bring you a fake hundred rands. You look at it; it looks almost exactly like uh, like the original, like, like the original one. But then it only takes a trained eye to to be able to pick it up to say that this is not the original. And how do you know? that this is a fake you can only know a fake by knowing the original so and unfortunately as children of god many of us we want to study the fake and not study the original and as a result of that that's when we become uh, we become lost many people want to learn how the devil operates and this and, and all that no you need to know how our lord and savior jesus christ operates you need to know the word of god and by knowing the word of god you will be able to pick up that which is of the enemy you will be able to pick up that which is uh, that which is faith so you must know jesus christ as lord and uh, as lord and savior so you must labor on that you must labor in uh, in the way that is why we are laying the foundation and the scripture that we have read says the foundation is jesus christ no other so once you are founded on christ himself then it's easy to pick up deception because the one on whom you are founded is the one who created every uh, everything so then you and you know that you are truly sure-footed and you will never be be misled because you know him and you know him for uh, for yourself the, the the other scripture that we read yesterday which we are going to read again today is matthew chapter 16 we read verse 13 to uh, to 17 and we are going to read that uh, again this morning when jesus came into the into the region of caesarea philippi he asked his disciples saying who do men say that i the son of man am and this is important you know uh, in terms of uh, us knowing you know we need to you know the people say a lot of things about about christ out uh, out there so we need to know what people are uh, are saying about uh, about him so they said some say john the baptist some elijah and others jeremiah or one of the prophets because once you begin to know what people are saying it gives you an idea of where they uh, of where they are it also gives you an idea of the relationship that they are having with uh, with him those who think you know those who uh, who say he's john the baptist uh, elijah and one of the uh, one of the prophets that is how they are perceiving him you no know, they perceive him as a s s a s that and you know it's very important for us to understand that perception is very is very important because how you perceive a person then in informs then how you receive uh, you receive them and it also informs how you receive from uh, from them you know pastor strike and pastor jolene are, uh, are our leaders we are submitted under uh, under them you know pastor jolene is the senior pastor pastor strike is the overseer and we recognize them as uh, as such and to us when they uh, you know they give commands or they say uh, they give you a task you receive that because you are submitted under uh, under them you know and and it is easy for us to be able to do a lot of things and it is easy for us to be able to grow because we receive receive them as our leaders and we receive them as the anointed of a uh, of god and we are able to grow under their uh, under their ministry but i promise you whoever you do not receive in or you do not perceive in a proper in a proper manner it is difficult for you to receive under that person and you will also be in discord with uh, with them so these ones were saying jesus christ is just a prophet and others were saying he's john the baptist and others were saying he is uh, he's elijah and then he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Maybe this should be your question for the, for the week. Who do you say Christ is? The question is, how do you perceive him? He was in essence saying to them, but who do you see me as? Uh, you guys, you are with me, but who am I to, uh, to you? So the question is, who is Christ to, uh, to you? And this, is, this was uh, Simon Peter's response. Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ the son of 
the living God. This is very important for us to understand. So Simon Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living, uh, the living God. And when you are born again, it's important that you understand that he is the, you know, he is the Christ, the son of, uh, of the living God. And listen to what Jesus Christ says afterwards in verse 17. Jesus, uh, Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in uh, who is in heaven. And I realize in this to say that, you know, uh, the, the deity of Christ, which is what I which is what I, which is what I want to talk about a little bit uh, this morning, is not something that we receive. You know, this is not something that uh, you know it's it's head it's head knowledge. No, this is something that is revealed built to us by uh, by the by the holy spirit this is not something no matter how much you can this is not something that you must try to understand with your uh, with your head this is something that you understand with your heart this is something that you understand with your uh, with your spirit then the head will make sense of it later uh, later on so and this is what i've noticed many people struggle uh, struggle with the deity of uh, of christ but uh, simon said you are christ the son of the living God, and he says, "Flesh and blood did not, you know, did not reveal this to, uh, to you. But you know, my Father from heaven is the one who has revealed this to, uh, to you." I want to take us through one, uh, one scripture which just makes us understand the deity of, uh, of Jesus Christ. To say he is not a prophet, he is not, uh, he is not Elijah, he is not Moses, he is not John the, uh, the Baptist, but he is Christ, the Son. Of, uh, of the living God. That is taken from the book of Luke chapter 1 and then we are going to read a few verses there from verse uh, from verse 35. It reads as follows in the New Living Translation. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit, maybe let me start from verse uh, from verse 8, my apologies there. Uh, Luke chapter 1 from verse, uh, from verse 30. Don't be afraid Mary, the angel told her. For you have found favor with uh, with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. We know uh, our general overseer has started, you know, uh, his messages a series on uh, on 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 the name of uh, on the name of uh, on the name of Jesus, and we are building up on that. Uh, on that name it be, we must be able to understand where that name comes from, so that we are able to be bold in using that uh, that name. He says, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the son of the Most High. You see here, the, the, you know, the angel says, he will be called the son of the Most, uh, of the most High. Though he might have been uh, born or here, on, uh, here on earth, but he is not from, uh, from earth. He is from, he is from heaven. So he is the son of the Most, of the Most, of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Verse 34, Mary asked the angel, But how can this happen? I am a virgin. I have not slept with, uh, with, a, with a man. How can this, uh, this happen? The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of uh, the Son of God. So you can see here that his birth, you know, uh, it was as a result of the Holy Spirit who overshadowed uh, Mary, who was uh, who was a virgin. And you know, when a woman is uh, is pregnant, that you you've got a child in the in the in that placenta, and then there is that umbilical uh, the umbilical cord, and there is the blood network. But you know, Pastor Strike one day when he was uh, preaching a few years a few years ago, he made this point very. Uh, very clear even with us in the health in the health sector that day you know our eyes were uh, were open you know and reminding us to say that you know the blood the mother and the child's blood they do not uh, they do not they do not mix so as a result of that even though Mary was carrying uh, Christ but because he it was the Holy Spirit who overshadowed uh, Mary Christ was separated from uh, from the mother, even though they were in. He, I mean, uh, he was in. Uh, he was in the womb. So the blood, the mother's blood, and that of the child, they never mix. That is why he remained uh, Christ. That is why he remained not tainted by the things of uh, of the earth. That is why we, uh, you know, the word of God says he knew no sin. Why? Because he never was touched by the blood of those who. 
were were conceived in uh, into uh, into sin. So he was separate, even though he was in uh, he was in the womb, and that's how uh, God has designed it to uh, to be. So we must know, we must be assured to say that he is Christ, the Son of uh, the Son of the Living God, and also his birth was not a human uh, a human birth. That is why many were you know were, were astonished. They kept on saying, "But is this not the son uh, the son of Joseph?" But we know that he was he, he the Lord of God says he was the son of Joseph. But we know that. He who was conceived of uh, of the Holy Spirit, God is actually His true uh, His true Father, and that is why He gave Him a name which is above all uh, all names. And He says to uh, to Peter, "Flesh and blood did not uh, reveal this to uh, to you, but my Father who is in uh, who is in heaven." Be assured, Mzalwani, that you know Jesus Christ is the Son, uh, is the Son of God, and His conception was not like yours, was not like, uh, was not like mine. That is why His name is above all other, uh, all other names. That is why we will be wrong to keep on, you know, being taken by the by the things of uh, of men here on uh, here on earth, and we keep on elevating men who were born of flesh and blood like you and uh, like uh, like you and I. But Christ was not an ordinary an ordinary man. Christ is God. Christ is the Son of the living of the living God. He is the Messiah. That is why when you believe in Him, you know that you are believing in one who was never tainted by uh, by sin, even though he was a uh, born. Of a of a woman, but he was not born of the seed of a, of man. That's why even uh, you know in the book of Genesis it says the seed of a woman. It doesn't say the seed of a, the seed of a man because if it was the seed of a man, then he would be like you, like you and I, and he would not be deserving of being glorified. But because he was uh, you know the seed of God, then he deserves the glory. He deserves. Uh, the honor. Let this be your foundation. Stand upon uh, upon this truth and know that you know you have got the authority then to call upon this name because this is a name that was given for you from uh, from heaven and this is the name upon which you know our foundation is built and will not be shaken, will not be moved because we are founded upon the correct uh, foundation. Amen. Let me take this time and just pray with us. My Heavenly Father, in the mighty and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you, King of Kings, this morning, even as we continue, Lord God Almighty, to, you know, to, to, to reveal the truth of who Christ is into our, into our lives. Help us, my Lord and my God, with this truth, to take it, precious Lord, and be able to stand and not doubt and not be moved and not be taken or swayed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. But, mighty God, we be sure-footed, we be properly grounded, knowing that He alone is, uh, is God. I pray for every man, for every woman, all the children, Lord God Almighty, even as the schools have, uh, have reopened. We pray for protection, precious Lord. We pray for safety on the roads. We pray, Lord God Almighty, even those who will be standing up this morning and going to look for jobs when many people have lost jobs. Mighty God, may you, uh, may you help them, precious Lord, to find or to get jobs in the midst of this situation where they say there are no jobs. And I pray, Lord God Almighty, that you give many men and many women and children, Lord God Almighty, wisdom and power to create wealth, to make and create businesses in the midst of this, uh, of this situation so that they are able to deal with unemployment. Father, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen.